So I kind of wanted to talk about the safety score and how it works. So you're probably wondering, okay, I have a 98 right now, um, and most of the bad part of my score is actually because of this forward collision warnings thing. And funny thing is, most of those forward collision warnings are actually happening because the uh, autopilot or the cameras detect a car coming uh, counter traffic, or sometimes it'll be a car that's parked on the curb and it will think that I'm about to hit them and it will sound an alert, which kind of sucks because this number is for every thousand miles. So you're probably wondering because here they will only show you like a little bit of this information here, okay? Um, and if you do learn more, it doesn't really tell you too much. You can kind of read over this stuff, all right? Um, but there's actually an extra thing here where um, if you go to frequently asked questions or the FAQ, FAQ, all right, here you can see, you can go ahead and read through all of this. But long story short, um, Tesla is trying to encourage people to use the full self-driving and um, while they don't say it, uh, let me actually show you how this works. So you can see here they tell you about the forward collision warnings and all this, thousand per thousand miles and all of that, the hard braking, aggressive turning. I mean you can pause and read all of this or you can go through your app and see it as well. But um, so here you can go and read all of this. Um, and forced autopilot disengagement, um, it's not when you pull the car out of autopilot, it's if you don't pay attention and the car turns autopilot off on its own. Um, and then here they tell you how they calculate the autopilot, or not the autopilot, your safety score and all of that. <clears throat> but uh, this is all like um, um, confusing, like you probably won't understand this formula and all these things. But the main thing here, if you look... Um, it tells you here, driving on autopilot, including three seconds after autopilot is engaged, will not be factored into the safety score formula, but the miles driven when on autopilot are included in the total. So basically what this is telling you is, let's go back to the, the safety score stuff. Oops, my bad. All right, let's go back into the safety score. So basically this per thousand miles, if you have your car on autopilot, even if it's about to... It, crash into something and tells you forward collision warning, or if the car decides to brake hard, or if the car decides to aggressively turn, or unsafely follow, or force autopilot disengagement, well, no, force autopilot disengagement, you, you'll still be affected because you want to make sure that it's turning off because you turned it off, not because the car um, saw you weren't paying attention. Also, the times where autopilot like randomly tells you to take over right away, those don't count either. It's the ones where it's telling you to put some force on the steering wheel, and if you ignore that, um, then that's where you get this uh, this thing that will affect you. Okay, so what I'm saying is, if you're in autopilot, any mistakes that the car is doing, any driving that the car is about to do, if you pull it out of there, um, and as long as you correct it within three seconds, you're basically going to be considered having a 100% um, safe score because they're not counting um, the mistakes the car makes. They're counting the um, mistakes that they think you're making. So if you're driving too close to something or it thinks you're about to collide, then it will it'll um, count against you. But if it's an autopilot it's about and it's about to hit something and you slow it down or stop it, that's telling Tesla that you're paying attention to the autopilot, and if it's gonna make a mistake, you're gonna fix it. So that's basically how um, Tesla is kind of pushing people to use more autopilot to get a good safety score. So you're more likely to get a 100% safety score if you have autopilot being used all the time, because then you're fixing the, the errors of autopilot, and within those three seconds after you, you fix it, um, it won't count as a, as a mistake to, towards you. So if you're watching, oops, so if you're watching and you're keeping it within those three seconds of like if there's a mistake or it's about to get into a mistake and you stop it, then that will look good to Tesla. Tesla will see it as you're very good. Not only are you a good, safe driver, but you're good at keeping the autopilot safe and teaching the autopilot what to do properly to prevent forward collision warnings. Basically, you're teaching it how to 
um, avoid getting into those situations. So if you see the cars getting too close to another car, you can slow it down and stop it before the car itself runs into an issue and it's like, oh no, you need to help me. So all that hard braking, you can teach the car hard braking. If you feel like it's not going to brake soon enough, you can push the brake pedal lightly to disengage the autopilot and slow it down ahead of time. And basically you're teaching the autopilot excuse me, and basically you're teaching autopilot to slow down in advance because right now autopilot, um, I feel it waits too long to, to hit the brakes or to let the regen start. So it's almost like it's either all full regen or nothing. It doesn't like gradually allow the regen to start to, to let it roll, uh, coast slowly, um, to a stop. And yeah, so, so basically um, Tesla is trying to get people to use autopilot more with this safety score thing. And because as you use autopilot, again, it won't negatively affect your score. And if you have to disengage it to correct something that autopilot's doing, it won't count the three seconds, uh, after you disengage it, um, if something is about to happen. So yeah, so basically Tesla is trying to see if you can see within three seconds, to keep it from having any of these close forward collision warnings, hard braking warnings, aggressive turning, unsafe follow, and forced autopilot disengagements. So it looks like I'm probably going to start using autopilot a lot more just to try and get this score up. Um, it does count based on the last uh, month or something, I think. Um, I think I haven't had the car a quite a month yet, so it's only counting starting March 17th because I got the car, did I get, I got a March 16th or something. So it's only counting that. So basically it's going to count a month. So for me to kind of erase all this driving that I've been doing that Tesla kind of assumed I was about to crash, even though I wasn't even close, but because it thought the car in the other lanes were going to hit me or something, then it counted negative towards my score. So I guess... Um, in about a month from now, I'll be able to get my score to 100%. I'll just have to keep trying to activate autopilot. And when I'm in areas like the street, city streets where there's cars parked along the side, maybe if there's no cars in counter traffic, I'll actually go more towards the center lane or something. But, um, yeah, so that's my findings for the safety score stuff. And again, if you wanted to learn more, you can go into the frequently asked questions things here and you can read all of this stuff. There's a lot. I actually read over kind of all of it. It tells you how to improve it and things like that. But yeah, long story short, um, basically use autopilot and make sure to watch the car because that's what the beta is. Um, it's going to drive itself. There's no point getting the beta if you don't want to use autopilot. So the beta is basically um, like teaching a new driver how to drive. You have to remain very attentive. You have to tell them if they're doing something wrong. You don't want to just let it drive itself. So by following, uh, by using autopilot all the time and correcting it when it's wrong, you're teaching Tesla or you're telling Tesla that you're ready for the beta and you're going to be attentive. You're going to watch over it. And if anything goes wrong, you're going to correct it. So that's what, that's how you get your safety score up and that's how you increase your chances to get the beta. Again, I don't have it yet. I haven't had the car that long, but uh, again, going forward, I'm going to be using autopilot a lot more to get my score to go up. So that way it ignores all the mistakes that they're doing on their own. And, and then I can be cor the one correcting it instead. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.